Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, the last video I did, I talked about the spiral Bible slash illustrating Bible dupe. DIY that I did. Um, this is one out of the set of three. Um, so basically, if you missed that video, I will link it up here somewhere. Up here somewhere. <laughs> um, and you can go back and look at the flip through, but uh, they basically it took me three books to fit in the entire Bible because this this bad boy is thick. It's thick. Okay, so this is about 500 pages, um, uh, four to 500 pages. The whole thing took 1300 pages. So it's split amongst three notebooks um, only because I was limited by the coil size. So this video, I wanted to go through and talk to you guys about how I did it, how much it cost, whether it's worth it to do it yourself or whether you should just buy the ridiculously expensive versions that are on the market. So we'll start with the materials I used and uh, how I put it together. And then we'll go into more of the discussion of the cost and what's worth it and what's not and some of like the pros and cons. So um, this is a two inch plastic spiral. Um, you can get them in clear, black, or I think white. I think I saw navy as well. Um, generally speaking, if you go to like, uh, I think I got, I got this off of Amazon, but they also have something called mybinding.com. There's also like a binding 101. If you go to any of these binding shops, they ha typically have different colors that you can get, but they're also kind of on the pricey side. Um, I went for the best deal I could find. Uh, the larger the coil you get, the more problematic it is, the more costly it is. So I really wanted to go with the metal coil. I think the illustrating Bible has a metal coil. Um, the spiral Bible looks plastic. I can't remember if it was plastic or metal, but it looked plastic. But they're also smaller. When you do thick things like this, the metal coils are so much sturdier. Um, I like them better. For this, I used to have one and a half inch metal um, coils, but I've used them all. And I have not been able to find where I got them from. I bought a set of 25, which were reasonably priced. Um, when I went back to look, the best I could find for these, these are two inch. Um, this is the end that I cut off. If you're curious about what that size looks like, this is a two inch coil. That's how, that's how round it is, how wide thick it is. Um, for the metal version of this, I saw a pack of 50 for like $300. That wasn't in my budget. That just wasn't in my budget. Um, so I let that go and I got plastic. Um, I got a set of 50 for like $99. Uh, which is still on the pricey side if you don't bind things often. Um, again, a lot of things come down to bulk pricing and the more you buy, the cheaper things are. I did find a website where you could get the metal coils. If you were willing to buy a thousand and they were like eight cents a coil, which is a really great price, but why do I need a thousand two inch coils like yeah I like to bind things but I don't bind things this big that often hello Allie for those who are new to the channel this is one of my cats this is Allie I guess she is helping to host this video now um yeah so the coils can be expensive um because I do bind things often and I will probably bind something thick I went ahead and spent the 99 for the thicker coil, the, the larger coils. Um, it works out to maybe like $2 a coil for each book, which is $6 total. Um, I could have made the books thinner. I could have used thinner paper, lots of things to kind of help with that. And then, like I said, if I were a day spring per se, um, I would have access to bulk pricing and I would probably be buying in a larger bulk, which would bring the cost down. But for us regular people, the coil is probably going to be the most, the hardest thing to get your hands on and the most expensive thing. Uh, that being said, 
if you do like binding and you have no need for a two inch coil, but you want a two inch coil, uh, send me a message. We can talk um, because I'm, I'm probably not gonna use all 50 of my two inch coils. That being said, um, the next thing that you can see here, I used regular cardstock paper for this. Um, now, you could use just one sheet of, this is an eight and a half by 11 notebook. So you could take a 12 by 12 sheet and cut it to make the cover um, if you wanted to. Uh, so you really only need uh, a couple of sheets. You could do the same cover for every single book or you could do something different. It's really up to you. You could use plain, like the, you know these plain colors or you could get something with a design. Um, you can buy individual pieces of paper for like a dollar, 50 cents to a dollar from like a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby, probably a Joann's. I haven't been to, in a Joann's in a while. They don't have one here. Um, come on, buddy. Let's let's chill. Let's let's not do all of that. <laughs> um, but the paper thing, it's really up to you. Um I use this because this is what I had on hand. This actually came from like a booklet that had like some fall themed stuff. And because I had enough to do all six in kind of like a matchy matchy fashion, I went ahead and went with that. These are not particularly my favorite colors or my favorite color scheme, but it's what I had on hand and I didn't feel like going to the store and buying something new. So that's what I went with. Um, also, you can also get um, chipboard that is finished. So under here, I actually have white chipboard instead of the usual uh, brown chipboard that you can buy. It's a little thinner than my brown chipboard. I don't know if you can see in here, if you can see that it's white around the rim here. Um, I bought that for projects like this where I don't want to be quite as careful. I don't want to tuck the pages over to cover the brown of the chipboard and stuff like that. Um, for example, I originally was trying to be a little fancier with the cover and I made a cover like this. This is vinyl. Uh, the vinyl is a little bit more expensive. I had trouble cutting it, couldn't get it perfectly square. So I had like gaps and I was trying to figure out how to cover the gaps to make it look decent. I ended up doing this. That didn't suit my fancy very well. I didn't like how it came out, but it also ended up being too thick when I went to bind it. Um, it was just contributing to the thickness of the journal all, um, all together and I didn't, I didn't like that. So I went to this thinner cardstock. I'm at this thinner chipboard. Um, but when you look at this one, you can see, let's see, you can see the brown of the chipboard in here because this is the standard brown chipboard that's that's thicker. And that's also why where it doesn't line up, you can see brown, which makes it look worse. So when I did this one, I went back to the white one because it's thinner and it's gives it a finished look. But you could also just not put anything on it because it's finished the way it is. So you could just have a white cover if that suits you and that would eliminate your need to buy any extra paper for that purpose. Um, another thing that you can see from the outer part of this is that I rounded the corners. Now, neither the illustrating Bible nor the spiral Bible have rounded edges. You do not have to round the edges at all. You could just completely leave that out. That would save you in time and money technically, but I used the We Are Memory Keepers uh, little punchy thing. I'll put it under here too if you wanna see it. But it has these little, these little slits like so, and you stick your paper in. There are three different roundness things. I used this one, which is the 10 millimeter. Um, there's a four millimeter and a seven millimeter, which are slightly less round. Uh, do I have some, I have some scrap paper here. I can, I don't know, this is not, this is probably not big enough. Um, I was gonna punch it for you so you guys could see, but I don't have a large enough scrap piece of paper to be punching holes into. 
Um, but I use this to round the edges. You can only fit maybe three or four pages in at a time though. So it was time consuming to actually punch all of these corners, but I had to punch the holes here as well. So I just punched the edges as I punched the, the, the side. So, you know, that's a take it or leave it type of a thing. As for these, this is a, this is four to one pitch. Um, I buy notebooks all the time. So I had a spiral punch for this. If you don't, then again, um, I mean, you could take it to like a FedEx or something like that. I'm not sure how much it would cost, but that's another thing that kind of took some time. Um, I can punch about 20 pages at a time. There are different types of these binding machines. So that's another, this is another thing where I contend that companies like Dayspring will have access to better equipment than you and I, because we're regular people. Um, I actually have two spiral punches. I have one that I bought when I was in college that is cheaper and one that I bought after I got a job where I upgraded. The one that I bought in college only punches about 10 pages at a time. The one that I upgraded to punches 20 to 25 pages at a time. I really bought them for things like this mishap of a cover. Um, my old one would not punch through this. The new one punches through this with a little bit of elbow grease. So that's the major difference between those. I'm pretty sure somewhere like FedEx or Dayspring, they have even more heavy duty ones where maybe they can punch like 50 pages at a time. Not really sure, but um, that is a time thing, also a cost thing. Uh, depending on whether you own one already or um, you don't. So that was another aspect. Now, as far as the actual interior of the journal, there are a lot of things in here that I did that you don't have to do, right? So I have this watercolor page because I knew I wanted to do this and I wanted to be able to add some fun things in the beginning and in the end. So I have a piece of watercolor paper at the front and the back of each one of these books. The watercolor paper I had sitting around the house, I don't remember how much it cost for this watercolor paper. So I can't really say, this is Canson for those who are curious, um, but that's something you don't have to add to your book. Um, when it comes to this paper, the regular paper, this is HP Premium 32 paper. I have been fully converted to this paper, it is wonderful, it glides. Pins just glide over them. I'm even rethinking what I feel about Tombos over this paper, like, I love this paper. And even at 32, um, I haven't had any, like, ghosting, I haven't had any bleeding. I've used some of my thickest pins on like some scrap sheets of paper, and it's been great. However, I use 32 pound instead of 20 pound because I wasn't sure of that. I had heard a lot of people rave about it, but I just wasn't convinced that it was as good as they said it was. It is. Um, 20 pound paper might have had a similar effect and I might have been able to get away with thinner paper, which would have made this whole book thinner, but I did not. So um, that is a choice that you would have to make. The paper itself, um, I want to think I paid something like $22 for two reams. A ream is 500 uh, sheets. And with one sheet, you can print two pages, front and back, of course. So total, I used probably like 650 sheets, um, which was like one and a little bit of a ream. Um, it's, you know wasn't horrible pricing. Uh, bulk pricing, you probably could get cheaper. I'm looking at y'all day spring. Um, I also did this. This was the, this is also optional where I printed out the, um, the stuff from Bible, uh, the Bible project. These I could have print, printed on the regular white paper um, and I wouldn't have needed to buy extra paper. This is vellum. I just thought it'd be cool for them to be kind of see-through-y. I don't know why. And I always wanted to do something like that. So I went ahead and did the vellum. Uh, I'll link the prices in the description box because I don't remember how much the vellum cost, but that did add to my total cost of creating this. Um, 
But again, you don't have to print out sheets like this at all. And if you do, you could use the white paper that you already have to buy for the regular pages. And um, if you buy reams of paper, you would have extra paper for this anyway. So that's another thing that's kind of optional. Um, and then we have these tabs. If you can see, I bought the tabs on Amazon. They were like $5, but I saw some that were like 99 cents. They just didn't look well. I just didn't like the way they looked, guys. I can't, <laughs> can't dress that up. They just look janky to me, so I didn't get them. I got the with the five dollar ones but you don't actually have to tab your bible um before i discovered that bible tabs existed i used to take the sticky notes like this um and i would just write on it and do it myself i also have several bibles that aren't tabbed where you just kind of all right i'm looking for you know i'm looking for the book of isaiah i know it's back here somewhere um you know and you just kind of go for it um, the reason I did go ahead and put tabs on this is because I have the three and it's easy for me to turn this over to the side and look and say, oh, the last one here is Job. So this one only goes to Job and then look at this one, you know, pull this one out and say, oh, this one starts at Psalms. Okay. That's where I need to be. Um, I just think it'll be easier than actually having to open it up and like physically look in the, the book. So that's why I added that that cost that add to the cost of the Bible by five dollars. But you don't have to do that. Um, printing is a thing. So printing out the text um, is another major cost that you have. So I have two different printers and I used a very specific printer to do this printing for this exact reason. So I have a laser jet printer and an inkjet printer. The inkjet printer uh, uses regular ink and it is great for printing images. So when I have like my little stickers, like this girl, right? So I have my little, my little person sticker and um, it's a little hard to see here. Maybe I'll zoom in a little. I don't know if that will help, but if I zoom in, you can see I have my little girl here. Um, I have another one, the same character, different colors scheme. Um, I printed these on the inkjet. They do great at printing images. When I want to print stickers, I use them, I use it, and they come out great. However, it takes a lot of ink. My other printer the laser printer is horrible at printing stickers the images look horrible it's not quality um but when you start doing black and white and you're just printing text or you're printing dots for your dot grids it works fabulously and it uses toner so with the particular printer that i have and the toner cartridge that i use i can print 3,000 pages with one toner cartridge so I put in a brand new toner cartridge just before I started this. Um, it just happened to be that that's where I was. And I just printed and printed and printed. And I printed this entire thing. And I still have all, it's basically still full. So uh, that's why I chose to print it the way that I did. Now, if you don't have a printer like that, then you're using like an inkjet where it's taking tons and tons of ink or you have to go to FedEx and have it printed or Staples or something like that. They're going to charge you like 10 cents a page and it's probably going to cost you like $100 just to print it. My version turned out to be about 1300 pages. You could make it less pages by decreasing the text size. I also found that if I had printed it the other way, uh, what is that? This is portrait versus landscape. If I had printed it landscape, so if it had sat like this instead, um, I could fit more text there as well. Uh, I just didn't like it. Um, also because I added the apocrypha to this or parts of the apocrypha to this um, that added to the page count. 
Um, but I could have gotten this down to probably like 800 pages. I might have been able to fit it in one coil if I'd used 20 pound paper with the, the eight point font. And um, that, you know, that might have done a little bit more to bring the cost down. Um, it's really personal preference and budget. So those are a couple of things that factored in to how much it cost to actually make the journal. Now, in terms of time, uh, the most labor intensive thing was probably uh, actually setting up the text. So um, it, the way I did this is I copied the text. The, this is the King James version. For those who are curious, the reason I use the King James Version is because it's in the public domain. Um, many of the Bible translations, the modern Bible translations, are copyrighted, which means that technically you cannot reprint them because they are under copyright. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, if you're looking at buying one of these other versions because they have a translation that you like and you don't like the King James Version, this is definitely not the method for you because it's probably illegal for you to print out the entire NASB. Just saying. Got to throw that out there so nobody goes out and says that I told you to print out a copyrighted Bible. Check the copyright status of anything that you print out. So that's why I use the King James Version. And um, I basically went to one of the online Bible companies that like shows you the Bible online copied it chapter for chapter and put it in LaTeX. LaTeX is a software I used as a grad student that we use to do uh, papers and articles. Um, it's really good for typesetting. And so I told it to do two columns. I told it to make a three inch margin. Um, I set it up with the headers and, and you know numbering and things like that. I told it to do drop caps on the chapters um, and that took a little bit of time because I, you know, I had to copy and paste everything into it and I set up the, the, like the template. It took me about three days off and on. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't a whole three days. Like I'm not talking about like 72 hours. I mean like literally like I worked on it today and then I went to sleep and then I went to work tomorrow and then I worked on it after work until I went to bed and things like that. So it really, you know, I mean, wasn't that bad, but it did take some time to set up. Um, I did spend some time trying to figure out up here, like this just says Leviticus 12 because uh, chapter 12 is here, but this is actually Leviticus 11, 39 through 13, eight. Uh, most Bibles would have said Leviticus 11, 39 through, you know, 13, eight over here or whatever. Um, it, that right there was a little bit much trying to get it to do that. And I didn't feel like going back and trying to finagle that. It's not that important in the functionality of the Bible for me. If that's important to you, you probably should get one of the commercial Bibles because they will be doing that for you. Um, again, the rest of it, uh, you could do this in Word. You don't have to do it in like LaTeX. You could do it just as easily in Word or uh, pages if you're a Mac user. Um, I just happen to use LaTeX because that's what I'm familiar with and that's was my preference. So those are some of the things um, that I did. I'm trying to think uh, of anything else that you need to know. If I, if I didn't cover something about how I created this, let me know and I'll try to go back and, and, and add it in. Um, it wasn't too, too labor intensive. Overall, it took me about a week start to finish to put it all together and to get all three books completed. Um, and part of that, I actually ended up working some late hours for work. So there were a couple of days during that week where I didn't touch this at all because I was exhausted. So that is the, the main thing. Now, in terms of pros and cons of doing it yourself versus buying the commercial brands and, and whether you should, you know, buy it or, you know, just make it or whatever. 
Um, as you can tell from a lot of the things I said, if you bind things often, it may be worth it to bind it yourself because you may have a coil sitting around. Like I said, if the coil is the only problem you have, let me know. I have a lot of coils. <laughs> but, you know, if, if you bind things often, you have the, the thing to do, the, the four pitch binding. Um, if you have, you know, chipboard, if you have paper, if you have a, a printer that will print this, you know, this many pages with a reasonable cost, then you have the ability to customize it however you want. If you want to do book by book, you could do that. If you want to try to fit it into one, you could do that. If you want to do the three like I did, um, that is doable as well. Um, <clears throat> you have, you can make the print bigger, you can make it smaller, you could use thicker paper, thinner paper, um, you can go in and add in different resources. You could print out maps and things to add to it if you want to. Um, you know, just whatever you feel like you need in your your spiral Bible, you could do. And that would be conducive to you. So that's one of the major pros. Um, I personally really like rounded edges. So that was a big draw for me for doing it myself. Um, the sharp edges, I don't know, especially in a thick book, I just feel like it's a paper cut waiting to happen. So that's another pro that you can you can kind of do things like that for yourself. Um, and of course you have the pride of knowing that it's your own. I'm not gonna lie, depending on, <clears throat> depending on how much you actually had to spend for one like definitely if i went out and bought one of the 20 dollar notebooks from spiral bible um i wouldn't have the whole bible and i only spent 20 dollars. there's a high probability that i wouldn't use it at all but after buying the materials for this and spending a week to put it together you best bet i'm about to use this bad boy like we about to do some intense bible study with it so um that's one thing uh, for motivation, um, you know, and also if you just like making things, I like making things. It was very fun. It was therapeutic. I put on some gospel music while I made it and it just, it was calming. Um, so it was like a good experience for me. If that's not your thing though, then that's, that may not be, um, what you want to do. I have gone back and looked at uh, the illustrating Bible. When I first saw the illustrating Bible, it was $99. It's now $62. So if you don't have supplies sitting around, it's definitely more affordable to just go ahead and buy the illustrating Bible. Um, like I said, it's going to be a different shape. You will have the whole thing in one, which is a pro. Um, the text is smaller, uh, which, you know, depending on your eyesight and your eyes, that may not matter at all or it may be a pain in the butt um but you know it's there so i'm happy that they have done this i think the illustrating bible was the first spiral bible um it's the definitely the first one that i saw on its website they claim to be the first i'm just i'm just gonna trust them on that um and so that's something that i think is great it's something that I think is useful. I think a lot of people will enjoy it. That's People have bought it. I've seen reviews on it here on YouTube. And so I'm grateful that they did that. Um, but I'm also grateful that I discovered that I could do it on my own and that you guys can do it on your own. Um, that it's, it, it doesn't cost $100 to do it. Um, I did, I mean, I did spend roughly 90-ish with all of the customizations I did on mine. With bulk pricing, I definitely could have gotten it down to like 30. Um, without the customizations, I probably could have got it down to like 75, which again, like I said, is higher than the 62 that you would pay for the illustrating Bible, but it's still lower than the 100 plus that you would need for the entire set of the spiral Bible. Um, so at the end of the day, it's really about how much effort you wanna put in um, and what types of supplies you have laying around your house because that will dictate how much extra money you have to spend or whether you already have the supplies there. I'm get, When I say I spent $90, I'm giving you an estimate 
based on how much it roughly costs to print it, how much it roughly costs to, to you know, to use this chipboard or, or whatever. But a lot of the stuff I had sitting at home, I didn't go out and spend $90 um, because I already had the materials. So that is definitely uh, something to think about when you when you do something like this. That being said, uh, one day in the future, I will have a video where I start setting up things. I have set up a little bit off camera, but hopefully I'll go back in and do some, some filming of me doing some studying in it to show you guys how I'm using it. And good luck, guys.